Hey, it's Danielle McCulley here in Seattle, also known as DMAC, and today I wanted to make a video about the FC Pro signals because I know there are some people that still aren't sure which signals are good and which signals are bad. So you don't quite know which signals to take and which ones to clearly stay away from. All right, so I just wanted to go over that in this short video today. So right now I have, that's EJ, I'm just going to, yeah, EJ pulled up on the 15 minute chart. This is one of my demo accounts. So let's talk about the signals. So what are good signals and what are bad signals? Um, like I mentioned before, to me, and this is just my personal opinion because I like using the higher time frames but to me the signals are um, going to be stronger on the higher time frames um, it's just less noise so you don't get a lot of you know sell by sell by sell by uh, you know you don't get a lot of um, indecision on those higher time frames that's why I like using them um, but I know there's a lot of people that you know that some people want to scalp on the 15 minute and some want to scalp on a five minute. All right, but this is an example. Look, let me do this real quick. So look how, look at the five minute and you see how it's just, you know, this is consolidation. This is sideways movement here. And you can see it, the up and down arrows just going back and forth. Like the market can't make up its mind. It doesn't know what it want to do. So which signals should you take here? None this is just ugly um, you do not want to be in the market when it's consolidating all right but you do want to be aware of it that it's doing that because you can use that as a warning sign that hey something's about to happen it's consolidating it's thinking it's it's going to break out you know it's either going to break out it's going to reverse it's going to do something so just kind of be aware of that even though these are terrible signals here just because of the market conditions it's just consolidating and another thing to be aware of is the currents like look at the currents and where are they you know when in comparison to price like these are going right through the candles that's not a good sign you know you want the the moving um yeah you want the moving averages or the currents whatever you want to call them you want them to kind of you know scoop up the market and come out away from the market you don't want them all up in the candles like that all right so let's go back to the higher time frame and we'll just take this out so I can scroll back and forth to show you so I was thinking about that like how can I help you even more with the entries or the signals um, the little arrows like you know there's two that I look for so this little red one that's you know the early bird signal that's going to be the more aggressive one so if you are not that experienced with price action you may not want to try to take these because you still have to look at the overall picture so if this popped up you're just going to go because it says, oh, it shows a red arrow, it points down, so you're just going to enter the trade? No, not necessarily. I mean, technically you can, but I wouldn't, don't just go off of the arrows. You know, come down here to the Doppler, look and see what is it doing. As you can see right here, it's in the oversold, I'm sorry, the overbought. It's in the overbought um, zone up here in the upper shark fin and this in trend at 68 so if you were in a so if you were in a buy and you came down here and you saw the price was like up here you may want to exit right there and especially if you got this reversal sign this reversal signal right here too so again if you don't understand um, you know, if you're not looking at the bigger picture, I don't care what system you use. Like, you're going to struggle if you're just 
looking at the arrows. You know, I, I think this template and this little system here is pretty simple to use. And like I said, if you stick to the rules and don't try to overcomplicate things, I think you'll be okay. But I understand maybe this is just too much for, you know, people to look at. And that's why I said, you know, the main two confirmations that you only need is going to be the, the current indicator, you know, so these color coded moving averages up here. And then you need to look at the Doppler because this is going to tell you that like those main two alone are enough to help you get those perfect entries. Like if you're just patient and you wait, you know, this indicator here down at the bottom is just the additional confirmation and so and so is the trim bar. You know, they they'll tell you like just looking at this trim bar, I see 1 2 3 4 5 6. There's six different time frames that are showing an uptrend. And then on the higher time frames, the daily, the weekly and the monthly, they're showing a downtrend. So I don't want to be in a sell, you know, with with the trend bar looking like this. And the way that I use the trend bar, I like to see at least, you know, three to four different time frames aligned. Like, you know, you got the M1 to the H4. That's That's a good sign for me. So that lets me know that, you know, the bulls are kind of in control. You know, if you go to the higher time frames, then, you know, the bears are still controlling that. But again, you know, if you look at the bigger picture, I think, you know, we get so excited about the white arrows or, you know, the red arrows or whatever color the arrows are. But, and that's how we think about it. It's like, uh oh, it says to enter. I better get in. No, you better not. <laughs> without checking and seeing if you have other confirmations to go with it all right and these color coded you know um, currents and stuff it just it's supposed to help simplify that you know so if you read the rules and it does require a little bit of patience um, I think you'll do all right but first you have to understand what is price doing you know so let's look at some examples and you probably won't find that many on the higher time frames because like i said it's just less noise you know the trades are a lot smoother on these higher time frames than they are the lower ones so but this is an example right here um this is an example here so you come down here and you see all these little buy and sell signals you know not so much you know the the safe white arrow but the early bird signals the green and red ones you see a lot just going up and down up and down up and down up and down so when you see that that lets you know that the market is consolidating it's a lot of indecision it doesn't know where it, it wants to go up one minute it wants to go down it wants to go up it wants to go down it's trying to figure out something right so which signal do you take none like that is not pretty to me that's just consolidation is icky but it does not have to be a bad sign because when you see a market consolidating that's usually a sign of a potential reversal that's coming or it can be a sign of a continuation of a trend so when you see it moving sideways like that you just have to be patient and wait for the market to show you its next move and a little simple thing you can do is you know just use your rectangle shape to and just draw a box around where price is consolidating from that high to the low right you can do that so you got that they call it the box and chill so you got price just bouncing up and down this little box so you just wait just wait for her to show you her next move and then right here 
on this er early bird signal you got a buy so it broke up and it just went up up and away for let's see again this is the four hour so that's like over 400 pips but I'm just showing you an example of like the consolidation where you want to stay out of the market you want to keep an eye on it you want to um, just kind of wait and let her show you its next move her next move and not only did it break up I mean you got the signal so let me delete that so you can see you got the signal here and then you also got you know current one and current two they both changed they went from red to green and then current one crossed above so that's a good that's a good signal and not only that but you want to come down here and see what the Doppler is doing now the Doppler called the buy right here because you have the blue RSI price line crossed above the red signal line right there and they both just went up up and away so that's the key to using this and this is another good example right here you see how it's just all these little candles and then you just get you know you get some of the white arrows and the colored arrows so the early bird signals and the sure shot signal it's just going up and down up and down you know can't make up its mind it's consolidating and draw your little box again draw your little box from the swing high to the swing low and just chill out wait and look what happens it breaks out breaks out to the downside no drawdown on that over 500 pips and again you know watch pay attention to the currents the the moving averages when they're all throughout the price I mean the candles like that that's not a good sign you know you want them to act as like a roller coaster so you want them to come out from the candles and push it down for the sale you know when when it's a buy you want it to come under and scoop it up so you don't want it running through price I mean the candles like that that's another sign to not be in the market when it's like that all right and then an another thing to pay attention to um, you know are these little points here they can be pivot points um, I kind of use them as swing high and swing low so when the market creates a new low you might get this to pop up I mean this they do repaint though so this could have been right there but you know what guess what it created a, a new lower low so this little thing popped up down here it repainted from here to there and then it did a little pullback it created a new lower high you know uh, so that's how I kind of use those little those little um, peak markers there and this is another little example now this is an example of consolidation and then it continues you know it, it, it dropped and these are also known as um, you know just a little bearish flag so you can draw your box or you can just draw it like that same thing you know bearish flag that's continuation of the trend broke down a breakout to the downside so how do you eliminate taking these bad signals well you just have to recognize what the market's doing you know is it sideways and in the PDF file for the strategy there is a market checklist that you should kind of be going off of or using like you know you want to check and see is price at some type of resistance or is it at some type of support um, if not then you probably don't want to trade it 
you know, like this is perfect. It's that support right here. So it respect this little zone. Support, that means, you know, it, you're looking for a buy if it's respecting that. You know, let's see. For, and this is a good example for resistance, even though it's not, you know, one of the automatic zones that that's drawn for you you know it's using the 800 it's using the the moving average as resistance but this is really what i want to show you guys so let's look at the 15 minute because i think a lot of people even i like to get my entries on the 15 but you see the difference so you do the one hour just scroll through do you see the difference let me all right so i mean i caught this for the telegram group too the buy but um it's actually starting to push up um yeah on the higher time frames just look at the difference you know you don't see a lot of indecision i mean you do but the trades once a move is made they're pretty they're pretty smooth they're a lot a lot smoother than those lower time frames so let's go down to the 15 so I used to I like to use the m30 and the m15 for my entries like you got a little consolidation there but then you get the break to the downside I guarantee you just go through the charts Look for consolidation and you're going to either get a continuation of a trend or you're going to get a reversal. That's the only two things it can do, right? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. You just have to keep these things in mind. Take a mental note of it. Like, okay, this thing is moving sideways. Let me wait and see which way it's going to show me it's going. And you can draw trend lines if you want to. So draw a trend line wait for the break you got the signal right there you can wait for the break okay and so for those of you that you know are more of a i don't want to say um novice or a beginner but i guess i can say more of a, a beginner but maybe you're not a beginner but maybe you maybe you're like a intermediate level trader all right, so this is what I would recommend. You know, if you are having trouble identifying which signals to take, which ones not to take, this is what I would recommend. I would go in this indicators list, right? I would go in the FC buy sale indicator and I would turn the early bird signals off. Okay, turn those off and just go off of the sure shot signals. So I think that will help eliminate a lot of the, okay, I don't know what I just did on that, but I think that would help eliminate a lot of the confusion by turning those off. That way you only have the sure shot entry signals showing. And those are going to be the safest ones anyway. You know, these are the signals that produce zero to very little drawdown. Majority of the time, it's zero drawdown on these if you're taking them at the right time, though. Um, let me try to see some. Go back to the 15 minute. Yeah. So, right here. Again, it's showing you an, a buy, but why would you buy? Why would you even think to be buying this? You just you just wouldn't if you're paying attention to the to the bigger picture, right? This telling you to buy. This is actually it's moving sideways right here. That's why you got these three arrows, and it. it's like down, up, down. Now this is the buy signal. It's not. This is a bad signal. Why is it a bad signal? 
draw your little vertical line you come down here and even if you're looking you're looking at the um, currents and you're like oh well this one is green it's still showing an uptrend but these are changing back and forth so that should be one um, that should be one sign to be like okay well you know this thing is going back and forth it's moving sideways it's consolidating you know and even though the it's green right here if you draw your vertical line come down here the Doppler is going to save you every time I promise you that it will save you every time you know so if you come down here and you look well what is it telling you okay well you got this yellow market baseline which will also help you identify the trend because when this yellow line is going down like this you're in a downtrend it's consolidating right here it's it, it flattened out so it's it's not really that sideways movement right there which it, it is if you look up here at the candles but what is it doing right here when it told you to enter for a buy okay so you come down here, you can see like the blue line. It it respected this market baseline. It didn't push above it. And what did it do? It crossed down below the red. The blue crossed down below the red. So no, you don't want to buy, but this was a good signal. This arrow right here. Because this is where the blue line crossed below the red. And you got the signal up there. And guess what? You could have wrote that down. Let's see how many pips. If you would have got in there. you Over 100 pips. You know. And I know some of you are saying, well, if I enter here, where would I, where would I teach? what would I take profit okay so for some reason oh I think this is for something else but um so one take profit you could have <clears throat> excuse me I hate when my voice cracks <laughs> but one um you could have used the you could have used this current right here for a TP you could just went from here to here that's 45 pips you could have let's see um, could have wrote it all the way down so the indicator oh I, I know what I did wrong let me just refresh this for a minute there we go so let me go back in here I was like why is this green so bare and naked I like it like that but I'm sorry, that just did not sound right. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, that came out wrong. Um, I'm talking about the charts, people. So, <laughs> oh man, I need a nap. Okay, but anyway, getting back to this uh, signal. So, what I was saying is, turn this off by changing this to false, right? And then it's only going to give you the white signals. The white entry signals. Okay, and I wanted to put the support and resistance zones back on here because I wanted to show you how you can use these as your take profits also. So let's say, um, let's say you entered here. Actually, you know, you would have entered here. You would have got a little bit of drawdown because it did go back and pin the 200 and then it dropped. You know, but if you understand price action and you know what to look for, you could have entered here. Why? Because this little dot tells you what? This is a new peak high. It might be a higher high or a lower high. In this case, it's a lower high. And let's see. You come down here. Look at the Doppler. Like I told you, it'll save you every time. It's in the upper shark fin zone so you got the cross down below the red so 
this is confirming the sale here. So if you would have got in right there, let's say you can just say, okay, my target is 10 pips or 20 pips. You can take it to that. That's 50 pips. You can go zone to zone. Like you can use these as potential take profit areas. And I'll go into detail, I guess, more into detail, maybe on a live Zoom or on a different video. But I'm just touching over these areas that people are having questions about. Um, where do you take profit? That's going to be totally up to you. Like I said, you can use these as potential take profit. If you did, you can see that it would have hit every one that's 20. No, I'm sorry, that would have been 40. That's about 60 right there. 80. And then if you would have taken it all the way down here, that's 140 pips. And so another question that people are, are asking is, where do you set your stop loss? But I also wanted to show you this too. Let me see something. I don't know if this is going to be a good example. Maybe, um, let me make this a different color. It might be hard to see, but I want to show you too how you can use your Fibonacci levels as take profits. Right? So you can use, um, a lot of people like to use the 38.2. As TP1. So let's just say this was if you were in for a buy. So you would go from the swing high to the swing low to determine, you know, your bullish targets. So let me just spread it out a little bit. So you can easily, you know, so. The 38.2, a lot of people use that for TP1. So if you had entered this buy, you get you come down here, you got the reversal sign here. Now this is the really aggressive entry. If you know what you're doing, you see that long um this long engulfing bullish candle. That's a good sign that it's going up. Down here, you got the cross above the red for the buy confirmation. So let's just say you entered here. Got that sniper entry and you you target at 38.2 look at that it's like 56 pips and then most people use 61.8 for tp2 so in this case it would have hit your tp1 it would have hit your tp2 and it would have kept on going all right so that's something that you can use to fibonacci level um retracement levels just remember the 38.2 and the 61.8. If you guys do not understand how to use Fibonacci, then that will require another video. And, um, a, you know, to break that, we can break that down at another time. But again, if you're in a buy, you want to see the bullish targets, you go from your swing high to your swing low. If you want to see the bearish, of course, you're going to go from your swing low to your swing high and you can still use the 38.2 for TP1 and the 61.8 for TP2 so hopefully that helps and then let's see another question was where would you put your stop loss and like I said it depends on where you entered and it also depends on where price is at like I said, is it at support and resistance? That's a bit, a really big key. So you, you want to go over that checklist. I think it's on the first couple of pages of the Forecaster Pro Strategy PDF file. You know, read that. Study that checklist. It tells you, is price at resistance? Yes. Okay. Look to sell. Is price at some type of support yes okay well look to buy if it breaks looks to sell you know but those are key factors so where would you put your 
stop loss. Okay, let's say you entered here for the sale. This is a good example because you got some good resistance here. You got, um, I don't know what which one this is, but you got this red line here. I mean, it's just a lot of resistance. You got all these red lines, right? And then you got the 200. So if you entered here, you can do a real tight stop loss. So let's say your entry was down here. You got in about right here. You can do right above, you know, a few pips above the 200. So let me use a line right here. So you can do, you can set this as your stop loss. Um, yeah, so you can do it a couple of pips above this high here. You know? And that's 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 having a really tight stop loss. I mean, most of the time you're going to want to, and that requires a really good entry with, you know, some confirmations that that baby is not going to push back up. But to be, to give the market a little more breathing room, you can place your stop loss at the previous high. Now that's going to be a little bit bigger stop loss there. Let's see how many pips. So that's like 65 pips, you know. But looking at this down here, you know, once you get that cross, it's a sale. So you, you may you may want you may be able to get away with you know bringing it down a little bit maybe here or I would say start there that would be a safe spot right there yeah about 45 46 pips and once you see price starting to go in your favor starting to drop you know you can start trailing that stop sign stop sign uh, stop loss. I need a nap, you guys. Um, yeah, you can start trailing it. You know? And it just depends. You can, this can be your initial stop loss. I would be okay for placing the stop loss here because if you entered here, like I said, you have all these resistance zones and then you have that 200 MA. I really didn't think, it doesn't look like price is going to pull back and go above that. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, and that's what I wanted to cover today in this video. And of course here, let's say if you had entered here for the buy, you entered here for the buy. This is where you can get those, those um, tight stop losses. But it requires you to just be patient. Like you come down here and you say, okay, this is in the buy zone. I got this reversal here. And then you see this long engulfing bullish candle. You can enter down here, even though the currents are way up here and you didn't get the signal. Now, if you had, now if the early bird, let's turn that back on and see. So, um, Let's just turn it back on. I just want to see something real quick. Yeah, so even these would have been kind of late up here. And then you would have got a little bit draw down. And then it would have pushed up. But again, don't pay attention to... Um, I won't say don't pay attention to them, but I'm just saying for those of you that are having a hard time trying to figure out what's a good entry and what is not you know just keep that on false and only concentrate only focus on you know these sure shot signals all right but if you entered here you could have a really like a 10 20 pip stop loss easily just because of the setup and where price is at prices i don't know if that's like a daily or h4 what resistance it is but you know it's at some type of um i'm sorry support you know it's at some type of support zone all right so hopefully you find this video helpful i probably rambled a little bit too long but 
I was just trying to um, cover those topics that people have been asking me about. All right. So that's all I have for you today. If you do have the FC Pro and you still have questions, you know, you can always reach out to me on Facebook or on Telegram. That information, my contact information will be below this video. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the FC Pro, uh, there will be a link below the video. You can click on that. It'll take you over to my website and you can learn more about it there. All right. So it's Thursday. It's probably be my last day trading for the week. Um, I hope you guys finish the week strong and have a good weekend and I will see you in the next video.